it's Nikki. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my sewn, oh forgive my hands, I have a painting project going on. Um, I am going to show you guys how I made my sewn rosettes with the glittered edges. Uh, they were crepe paper rosettes and I had made them for Anna's Wonderland. It was her uh, spring fling swap giveaway. So um, I saw this idea online. I've I watched a couple videos. I um, would love to give credit to um, the person that I saw. I think it was Lolly Palooza. I'm I'm gonna look for it and try and link it down below. If I didn't, it is because I can't find it. So I apologize for that. Um, but what you want to do is you're gonna start with crepe paper. I'm gonna be using this really light pink today. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I have a cutting mat here and it is 24 inches long. So I'm just going to take it and I'm going to measure um, about 24 inches, give or take a little bit. Um, I, I usually go a little bit bigger, but I'm going to do 24 inches three times. So we're going to end up with six feet total or a little bit more, like I said. Um, let's see. So that is three lengths of the mat equaling about six feet. So then it looks like this and you're going to want six layers. So what I did is just fold it in half um, and that gives me about a 12 inch um, piece here. Okay. So you can count then it gives you six layers. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if you use this length, which is about an inch and three quarters, they're a little bit too big. So what I like to do is fold it down and I, I like to pat it down to keep my edges straight. And then I'm going to fold it again. And I don't do a precise measurement here, but I'm going to take about a quarter of an inch off. Um, so I'm just going to take my scissors and you just want to make sure those edges are even. So, you know, take your time to tamp them down and just make sure they're as even as possible. And then I'm just going to do, like I said, about between a quarter and a half inch, I'm going to take off. And then you're left with this. Okay. So I'm going to make it back into the 12 inch section. And I just need to grab thread. I will be right back. So I just grabbed a regular multi-purpose cotton thread. I'm going to find a needle. Um, any one of these will do. Actually, this one is an upholstery needle um, with a dull edge. That one isn't going to do. You're going to want a sharp edge for this because you're going to pierce through the crepe paper. So just thread my needle and I usually do a double layer of thread it just makes it a little bit stronger pull that all the way through make a knot at the end And then you're going to start. So the edge that I cut is the edge that I'm going to sew against because then that gives us a nice even edge on the other side, which is going to be the outside of the rosette. And I'm just going to start about, I would say maybe an eighth or a quarter of an inch in. And then try and keep that consistent as you're going along. And you're just going to do just a running stitch and just make sure that you are keeping it even on both sides. This needle's probably a little bit thicker than I like, but it should be okay. So as you can see, I'm just kind of weaving it on and off the needle. You're gonna stop and just make sure your edges are even on both sides. And you don't have to be real precise at this. They don't have to be even. Try, I mean, try and get them as even as you can, but it's not, um, it's not gonna make a huge difference in the end. I'll just 
just pulled that through, get them all in order again. So these are one of the things I'd like to um, create a bunch of so I can build my stash. That is something that I was trying to do um, over the next month or so. I'm not participating in a ton of swaps. I have um, a birthday challenge or two that I want to participate in. Um, and I'll probably start working on that this weekend. But then um, I have a spring swap coming up with Tina over at Tina's Craft Creations. So, so that'll be kind of like my big spring swap. And I don't think I'm going to commit to too much else. Um, like I said, I want to get my stash built up for summer. I've got another little project in the works that um, is going to be taking up some of my time. So I want to be able to still participate, but um, I don't want to have to spend the time making um, embellishments from scratch. So, you know, I'll be filling up my tear tray and that'll be coming soon too with spring. Okay, so now I've got it all sewn together and you're just going to start pulling. And you're going to want to be really gentle because I've had my um, knotted end go right through my rosette and then have to start over. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and give myself plenty of room. So you see that I took the side that had the knot in it and pulled that out. So I was able to get both tails here so I can form my knot. You're going to want to get this knot as tight as you can. Um, using just one person. It is kind of hard to do one-handed, um, but you are going to have a little bit of gap in the middle, but that will be covered by a circle um, circle cutout, so don't worry too much about that, but just try and get that as tight as you can. I usually double or triple knot here. One more. Okay, so then I'm going to trim off my extra thread and I'm going to clean this up a little bit here. So you can see I've got some extra right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim that off. And then these two edges will be glued together there to keep them to keep them together if you needed to. I, I, you don't have to glue it. Um, okay, so as you can see, here's the rosette. It's got the really pretty um, pleats in it. They look really nice. Um, just making sure that they're all going the same direction. That one was sticking up a little bit. I need to push that down. Okay, there we go. And once you're at this step, you can do two things. You can leave this as it is, or you can actually pull these layers apart, which is really pretty too. So if you pull all your layers apart, it gives you a, a full rosette. Um, and I can show you that. I'll, I'll make one of those too, just so you can see the difference. But I'm going to keep this one like this. Um, I'm going to get my circle punch, and we're going to punch out two dots to hot glue on the middle. I've got two different papers here to choose from. I have this beautiful pink um, glitter paper that is from Michaels. And I'm going to punch two of those out. And then I have this gold um, foil paper, and I'm going to punch two of those out as well. And then we'll decide which one we want to do. stuck in there. Okay. So that is the pink. I think I'm going to go with the all pink. I think that looks really pretty. Here is what the gold looks like. And the gold is really pretty if you're going to use like a gold chunky glitter. Like if I was going to glitter it with that, I would definitely go with the gold. And let me show you what that looks like. I actually have one pre-made here. That is what that one looks like. So that has the gold center and it has the gold glitter on the edge. But this one I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do the pink center and then this pink iridescent glitter. So we're going to try that just for a different look. So I have my hot glue gun here. We're just going to put a generous dab right around the center there. 
I'm going to center that. And then this is where you can kind of play with it if you want to make it into a more circle shape. You can trim it here if you need to. I think that looks good. And then I'm going to do this side. And I won't even need to glue those edges together. The glue from the center is going to hold that in place and I'm not worried about it. So that's what it looks like. It's super pretty so far. Now comes the fun part. So I've got some glue and I've got this glitter. So this is pop glitter. This is called Pink Iris. It's a party blend glitter. It's really... Um, got all different sizes in there but there's some bigger chunks and then smaller pieces of glitter as well and that's what I like about it it's the same as this so you can kind of get bigger chunks on there but I'm gonna take my glue oops whoa I watered this glue down a little bit so this is just a multi-purpose glue this is also from Joanne that pop -a brand I put some water in it just because I think it's too thick so I just put a little water in the bottle and shook it and that's why it's so thin like that but what I'm going to do is just take a paintbrush. This is, I don't know, just a set that I got at Joann's or Michael's or something. And then I'm just going to start painting the edges with the glue. And you might want to come up a little bit onto the sides. because that's going to give you a little bit more glitter showing from the front. But that's up to you. You can just do the edges if you want to. I'm going to try and get up. A little bit on on some of them maybe not on all of them and I'm gonna do about a quarter of the way and then I'm going to dump some of this out and I'm going to roll it or like dab it in it do it like that and that is what that looks like this is real subtle this would be so pretty with a winter one it's kind of like a sparkly kind of snowflake look to it um, but I, I think this will look really pretty with your spring and Easter projects as well. This pink is gorgeous. So I'm just going to continue painting around the edges. Like I said, you can do about a quarter to a half of the rosette at a time. It, the glue does not dry quickly, so you have plenty of time to work on it. Again, just go and dab it in there. Make sure you get the sides as well. And if you want to create, make sure that your um, pleats are all kind of showing and not all glued together. You can just kind of spread it apart and break up the, the chunks of glitter that form when you dab it. I'm about halfway done here. I think this is a nice project um, if you're doing like your stash building you can sit in front of your TV and um, create the rosettes you if, as long as you have a piece you know if you have one that you can do your measurements by you could just sit down with a roll of crepe paper um, and cut them all sew them all and then do your glitter at another time and they go fairly quickly edges my sides go through the whole thing again look at how pretty that looks you guys I love how this looks uh, the pink on the pink that is really pretty and again here's the gold you can see it just gives it a completely different look all right so let me go ahead and make one that is a fluffy rosette let me get it started and i'll be right back to show you guys how to uh break that apart and make it a chunky rosette all right i've got my second rosette made now i'm going to start over where it meets where is my here we go and i'm going to start where all the edges are open and i'm just going to start pulling it apart I'm gonna do it layer by layer. So I'm gonna go all the way around the first layer. And then 
you're going to want to do it on each side. So now I'm going to take the next layer on the other side. And I probably should have cut these apart because they're all joined. Um, but I still think it'll look okay. We'll, we'll look. So you can see like right here what I mean, this is folded over to the next one because I folded it to cut it and to sew it. I probably should have snipped both ends, but I think, I think it'll be okay. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And now I'm just going to kind of push it back together, okay? And kind of get rid of that seam that's in the middle, but we're gonna keep it nice and fluffy. So it's gonna look like that. Isn't that pretty? It almost looks like a flower. And um, you know, you can decide how thick you want it. I'm going to go just a little bit thinner. I wanna pull out my edges, make sure none of them are tucked in because I wanna make sure that that glitter gets all inside there. And I'm gonna go about like this. Okay, so it looks like that. So then it's the same process, but you're just painting more of the area and you're going to just want to make sure you're kind of getting in there making sure you're getting all of the different layers and you'll be able to tell once you put the glitter on if you need to go back and add some glitter in certain places you certainly can do that and uh, run it through the glitter again just try and get in all that those folds do this and see what it looks like Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. I'll we'll just continue the process. Going for our last glitter. Make sure it's all covered, and then I'll go in again. Oh, I think I need some more over here. I'll go again, and I'm going to. Separate and fluff. I'm going to bring it in a little bit because I don't want it that thick. I'm just going to sprinkle it on here now because I don't want to um, tamp it down anymore. I don't want my edges to get crinkled. You can just play with it a little bit. Just make it how you want it to look. And then there you go. Now we're going to let it dry. And this is your layered one. Look how thick and chunky that is. It's so pretty. So here's the two differences between them. You can tell that they give you a much different look. This is really kind of a shabby chic flowery look to me. And I really love it. Um, here's the back side. Oh, see now my back side is a little crinkled. First I want some more glitter on there. And then I need to straighten this out. And if you, your glue is too wet, you can rip your edges. So just be gentle when you're playing around with it. There we go. Yeah, that is going to be gorgeous on a project. So there you go, guys. That's how you make both of these different rosettes. I hope you enjoyed the process. If you give it a try, let me know. I'd love to see what you do with it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.